Amidst the chaos of combat, a guardian takes flight. This guardian is not of flesh and blood, but of steel and firepower. Meet the A-10 Thunderbolt II, an aircraft of fearsome force designed to unleash devastation upon the enemy. As its mighty machine gun pierces the battlefield, it strikes fear into the hearts of those who hear its bone-chilling sound. This symphony of destruction echoes, forever etching this flying menace into the memories of all who witness its power. Brace yourself as we unveil the untamed might of the A-10 Thunderbolt II, the Warthog. The Fairchild Republic A-10 Thunderbolt II is one of the most formidable aircraft developed for the United States Air Force. It's a simple, effective, and survivable twin-engine jet designed for close air support for ground troops, engaging armored vehicles and enemy forces. In service since 1976 as the only production-built aircraft dedicated solely to close air support, it held a crucial role in the Air Force for decades. In the years after World War II, the United States Air Force lacked these aircraft types. The doctrine of engaging the massive armored assaults of Warsaw Pact troops with nuclear weapons prompted the rise of high-speed tactical aircraft. However, the experience from the early stages of the Vietnam War showed that the engagement of the enemy took place on a far lower scale. For this task, the Army needed a simpler attack aircraft to support the infantry troops in assaults on enemy's fortified positions. At the time, the only aircraft capable of the role was the piston-engined, propeller-driven Douglas A-1 Sky Raider. Even though it proved its capability in the Korean War, the A-1 Sky Raider was too slow and vulnerable to ground fire to pose as effective solution for close air support missions. During this period, the United States Army introduced Bell UH-1 Iroquois helicopters into service. Initially utilized as a transport, it swiftly underwent field modifications to transform it into a helicopter gunship with gun and rocket pods. Soon after, the Bell AH-1 Cobra made its debut. An attack helicopter armed with long-range TOW missiles capable of neutralizing tanks. Cobra was followed by AH-56 Cheyenne, an advanced attack aircraft with enhanced speed. This led to a general shift in the US's military strategy in fighting armored units. However, recognizing helicopters' drawbacks and close air support capabilities, the US Air Force embarked on acquiring a simple, cost-effective, dedicated close air support aircraft with capabilities matching the A-1 Sky Raider. Under the USAF Attack Experimental Program, a detailed request for proposals was issued. The new aircraft design was supposed to be tailored to accommodate the formidable 30mm rotary cannon. Other requirements included a maximum speed of 460 miles per hour, 4,000 feet takeoff distance, 16,000 pounds external load, 285 mile mission radius, and a unit cost of 1.4 million US dollars, 10.5 million today. Six companies submitted design proposals, of which Northrop and Fairchild Republic were ultimately selected to build prototypes. Northrop's prototype was designated YA-9, and Fairchild Republic's bore designation YA-10. General Electric and Philco Ford were chosen to develop and test Canon prototypes. Following rigorous trials and a head-to-head -head evaluation, the USAF ultimately announced the selection of the YA-10 for production on January 18th of 1973. General Electric was responsible for manufacturing the GAU-8 cannon in June of that same year. To further affirm the necessity of a new attack aircraft, the YA-10 underwent an additional fly-off in 1974 against the A-7D Corsair II, the primary USAF attack aircraft at the time. The maiden flight of the first production, A-10, occurred in October of 1975, with deliveries commencing in March 1976. Until production stopped in 1984, a total of 713 A-10s were built at a cost of roughly 20 million each. The aircraft was originally manufactured by Fairchild Republic, which became part of Northrop Grumman in 1987. Northrop Grumman has been the prime contractor of the A-10 since then. Upon its introduction into the Air Force, the A-10 presented an unmistakable and distinct profile. Its unique appearance sets it apart from any other military or civilian aircraft. Unfortunately, the initial reception was less than favorable. Criticism ensued, focusing on its aesthetics, perceived lack of speed, and chances of survival. The A-10's unconventional design concealed its versatile capabilities from those who prioritized air superiority. 
and aspired to go higher and faster. However, beneath its unassuming exterior, the A-10 held remarkable multifunctional talents waiting to be discovered. What the critics overlooked was that A-10 was primarily designed to thrive in a hostile anti-aircraft environment, enduring threats from anti-aircraft guns and radar-guided and infrared missiles. Indeed, the A-10 is one of the most challenging planes to bring down, thanks to its array of defensive measures. Among these measures, protection takes center stage. A-10 Thunderbolt's single-seat cockpit is shielded by all-around armor, featuring a robust titanium bathtub structure up to 3.8 centimeters thick. This formidable armor ensures the pilot's safety, even enduring direct hits from armor-piercing and high-explosive projectiles of up to 23 millimeter caliber and indirect hits from 57 millimeter shell fragments. All four fuel tanks strategically positioned near the aircraft's center are isolated from the fuselage requiring projectiles to breach the aircraft's skin before breaching the outer skin of a fuel tank. In case of damage, compromised fuel transfer lines possess self-sealing capabilities. Additionally, most fuel system components are housed within the tanks, preventing fuel loss due to component failure. Reticulated polyurethane foam lines the inner and outer sides of the fuel tanks, effectively containing debris and minimalizing fuel spillage. Similarly, redundant hydraulic flight control systems are fortified by manual backup systems, enabling pilots to continue flying and safely land in the event of hydraulic power loss. Overseeing the battlefield, the A-10 pilot enjoys excellent visibility. The cockpit's large bulletproof bubble canopy provides a wide field of vision, with 20-degree visibility over the nose, 40 degrees over the side, and an impressive complete 360-degree view. The front windscreen and canopy are further resistant to small arms fire, ensuring an extra layer of protection. The dedication to protecting both the pilot and the critical flight control system showcases the A-10 Thunderbolt II's primary commitment to establishing resilience in the face of adversity. Following that principal idea, designers mounted the engines high on the rear fuselage, where they were shrouded from ground fire. This unusual location of the engines also decreases ingestion risk and allows the engine to run while the aircraft is serviced and rearmed by ground crews, reducing turnaround time. Moreover, it enables the pilot to control the aircraft even if one engine is malfunctioning. The aircraft was propelled by two General Electric T434-GE-100 non-afterburning turbofan engines, with a thrust of 9,065 pounds each. They provide the aircraft a maximum speed of 420 miles per hour. A-10 has a standard range of 800 miles and can reach an altitude of 45,000 feet. The relatively low speed, in combination with a high aspect ratio wing and large ailerons, gives the Thunderbolt an excellent maneuverability. The engine's high 6 to 1 bypass ratio contributes to a relatively small infrared signature. At the same time, their position directs the exhaust over the tailplanes, further shielding it from detection by infrared homing surface-to-air missiles. While the A-10's rugged design allows it to withstand heavy fire and perform in harsh conditions, it's the immense firepower that truly sets it apart on the battlefield. The Thunderbolt II is versatile in its arsenal, capable of utilizing a range of conventional munitions. These include general-purpose bombs, cluster bomb units, laser-guided bombs, joint direct attack munitions, wind-corrected munitions dispensers, combined effects munitions, mine-dispensing munitions, rockets, illumination flares, and most importantly, AGM-65 Maverick and AIM-9 Sidewinder missiles. However, its main weapon is GAU-8-A Avenger 30mm 7-barreled cannon, the world's most powerful airborne gun. Specifically designed for an anti-tank role, this gun fires a range of ammunition, including armor-piercing incendiary rounds, to uranium-depleted API rounds, at a rate of 3,900 rounds per minute. Guns of the first versions had a dual rate of fire of 2,100 and 4,200 RPM. The weapon can provide a lot of firepower with a magazine of 1,350 rounds and an effective range of about 1,950 yards. Its distinctive burst sound is probably the main trademark of the A-10 Thunderbolt II. From 2005 to 2009, the A-10 fleet underwent comprehensive modernization under the Precision Engagement Program. The upgrades included installing two-color multifunction displays in the cockpit, introducing a hand-on-throttle-and-stick system, improved computers, 
enhanced power systems, and a MIL-STD 1760 data bus. This enabled new weapons like the GPS-guided Joint Direct Attack Munition. Additional enhancements comprise the embedded Global Positioning System slash Inertial Navigation System for precise aircraft location, and BAE Systems Terrain Profile and Matching Systems. The upgraded A-10s also had electronic countermeasures, target penetration aids, and self-protection systems. The combination of the A-10's defensive and offensive features makes it a perfect weapon for close air support missions, in which it operates with exceptional precision and effectiveness. When tasked with close air support, the A-10 works closely with ground forces, providing critical air support in direct proximity to friendly troops. The process begins with coordination and communication between ground forces and the A-10 pilot. The ground forces identify targets, communicate their locations, and request support from the A-10. After receiving the mission details, the pilot proceeds to the designated area of operations. The A-10 unleashes devastating firepower on ground targets with its powerful Avenger Gatling gun. With an ability to loiter over the battlefield for extended periods, withstand enemy fire, and continue the mission even in the face of damage, the A-10 ensures continuous support, providing an immediate response to emerging threats or targets of opportunity. It was precisely for its durability and ability to withstand substantial damage that the pilots nicknamed it the Warthog. Operating under 1,000-foot ceilings and 1.5-mile visibility, the A-10 demonstrates its versatility in all weather conditions. With the ability to carry precision-guided and unguided munitions, it can effectively engage targets above, below, and in challenging weather conditions. The A-10's wide combat radius and short takeoff and landing capability also enable operations in close proximity to their front lines. Equipped with night vision goggles, A-10C pilots can confidently execute their missions during darkness, further expanding their operational capabilities. The A-10 Thunderbolt II has participated in major operations such as Desert Storm, Southern Watch, Provide Comfort, Desert Fox, Noble Anvil, Deny Flight, Deliberate Guard, Allied Force, Enduring Freedom, and Iraqi Freedom. During the 1991 Persian Gulf War, A-10s proved their unmatched tank-killing capabilities. Out of 144 deployed aircraft, only five were lost while completing 8,624 missions. Their impressive record includes destroying 967 tanks, 1,026 artillery pieces, 1,306 trucks, 281 military structures, 53 Scud missiles, 10 grounded aircraft, and two airborne aircraft. During the conflict, several aircraft survived direct hits from heat-seeking missiles and safely returned to their bases. As we look back on its distinguished service record, we recognize the A-10 Thunderbolt II for what it truly is, a relentless guardian, a fearsome force, and above all, a timeless icon of aerial warfare. Thanks for watching the episode. If you liked it, please make sure to share it and give us a thumbs up. Let us know in the comments where you rank the A-10, and don't forget to subscribe to our Militology channel for more content. Stay tuned.